All right. So I have like 10 minutes before I need to leave and I'm doing an Instagram reel uh, or Instagram live because every time I record this as a normal video and upload it to Instagram, the audio drifts. So I'm just going to do it like off the fly, off the cuff and um, doing it live. I haven't a clue what it's going to turn out. I don't even know if I'm going to make a mistake. I might even finish this video before I finish this talk. Anyway, somebody just asked me how to set up a diet. And what they meant, obviously, is a calorie deficit. How do you set up a calorie deficit? And I'm going to give you a very, very quick rundown on how to create a calorie deficit, for obvious reasons, to lose body fat. And it's slightly counterintuitive, and this is why I want to do it quickly for you, because you might learn something. So, your number one question to ask when you're setting up a diet is, what can I add? And this is what I mean by counterintuitive. And this is important because you need to start with what you add to your lifestyle rather than what you take away. And so the first thing then in terms of priorities, what we're doing here when we're creating or setting up a diet. And again, the diet is for fat loss. And this is a short Instagram live. I'm not going to talk about the nuances of whether you should or should not diet, but this is just to answer a question. So, what our first priority is, is what can we add, right? And so what we're going to look at first is the kind of scale of the importance of what you're doing. So, I've already put a one here, but maybe try and put a one in a square box to, to, to say uh, priorities here. So, the number one concern that we're going to do when we're creating a fat loss diet is recovery. Right? How do we get recovery to be 100% at all times? Right? This absolutely is what you should focus on if you're in a diet. From that, we're looking at sleep. Right? How do we improve the quality of sleep? Right? So this is your first place to start. How do I do fat loss? You first figure out how to recover as much as you can and get your sleep as best as you can, right? The second part of it, I'm going to have to scrub this board, is training stimulus, right? And what this means is how do I get my training stimulus to be as good as possible, meaning that you should be training better and harder during your fat loss and recovering better and faster in your fat loss than at any other time. Why? Because this is, a, this is how you're going to lose body fat, not by pulling yourself down, but building yourself up. You're going to recover the way up. So you're going to recover the way up to lose body fat. Right? And this is what I mean by it's counterintuitive. I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to have to wipe this off. So, what does this mean? What does this mean? So, if we've got one is recovery, which is going to have sleep, and two is going to be training quality, right? You're not going to be able to read this on the board, but you can hear my voice, right? And that's going to be stimulus. And the purpose of this, right, is basically, if I draw an arm here, that's not an arm, that's a muscle, that's a hand, right? The purpose of this is we want to try and stimulate the body to hold on as much as it can to lean body mass and also jack your metabolism up, building everything, recovering everything, and basically sending massively strong signals to your body that everything is okay, that you need to be doing a whole bunch of stuff and that you're healthy. And that's why the recovery is the most important thing. So recovery and training stimulus. So what does this mean? What does, the, what does this actually mean in, in practical sense, right? And obviously I'm, I'm, a, I'm sports nutrition, so we're gonna look at the nutrition side of things. Your body, if we can think about it, has a kind of a balance, right, between uh, what we can call it. Uh, this is balance, this is recovery, and this is stress, right? And what happens 
actually this is a really crappy thing because we need it to go the other way hold on i need to do this differently that's not a good metaphor that's going to go the opposite way let's think of it like dials maybe this is a better idea so here's a dial and here's a dial and they're inverse to each other or how can i say basically uh when you dial stress up, right, you need to concurrently dial recovery up. If you dial stress up, right, whether that is training stress, whether that is uh, sleep stress, whether that is just life stress, then you have to dial the recovery up because if you don't, and this is really the biggest overarching thing, is that ultimately your body is going to work on signals. If you stress the crap out of it, which includes creating a calorie deficit, right, and eating less food, your body is going to basically go, I'm not very happy, so it's going to micro-change everything and keep changing all of these dials. And all of these dials will be things like, if you create a calorie deficit and you are also creating a whole bunch of other stress, what will happen is that, for instance, when you're walking, you won't swing your arms as much. Or when you're sitting and talking to people, you won't talk with your arms. Or when you're standing around, you will lean against the wall. Your body will continually micro-turn down its calorie expenditure to try and make up for the imbalance that you're creating because you're dieting, right? Along with a whole bunch of other things. And so this is why I keep saying you've got to try and make your body as happy as possible You've got to keep trying to figure out how do I recover and how do I sleep and how do I stay as happy as possible when you're creating a fat loss, uh, a deficit. And that is basically going to be managing stress. So I've got like five minutes before I have to go, so I'm going to quickly do this again. So, what this means in terms of the way that I view things, right, is that we have a window of time, right, throughout the day. Let's say this is breakfast, let's say this is dinner, and then here, is your training window. So this is your training window, and this is basically stress. Right? So, in my mind, what we're trying to do is how do we change the body's interpretation of this stress window? And it's obviously the highest stress point of the day because this is where you're physically stressing your tissues by doing resistance training, which if you remember is basically the second priority, right? You have to create a stimulus for change. But what happens if we stress the crap out of our body here, that's going to make the body quote unquote unhappy because it's creating more stress on top of the calorie deficit. So if you've known me for a while now, you know that one of my biggest kind of useful coach rules is basically packing out the training window with food, right? And this is the purpose of it. How important is eating at breakfast, right? In terms of balancing the stress of the body. We can talk about maybe the liver, right? We want to basically bring in uh, glucose and fructose to restore the liver glycogen. But outside of that, this, the, the need of the body for breakfast is pretty low. Now, I am absolutely not saying you should fast through breakfast. Why? Because if you fast through breakfast, you create more stress. It's not talking about fasting. But what I'm talking about is where you should be padding most of your nutrition, and that is around your training window, or rather in the hours preceding it as well. Why? Because this is where your body is receiving the most stress. Right here, for most people, during the most of the day, they're at work, they're at the office. So here, if you're going to remove calories, and I'm not talking about fasting, I'm not saying fasting is a good idea, you can play with energy here, but you've got to put all the energy and all of the carbohydrates, glucose availability, energy availability, and protein around this high stress window, which is where you're training, and then all of the other hours afterwards. And the purpose, again, of doing this is because we're trying to make the body happy. So, and if, you're, if, you're, if you're wondering, yes, I am wiping the board with uh, some underwear, but they're clean underwear, so I promise you that. So, in terms of a priority, right, 
priority one when we're creating a calorie deficit is recovery, right? And that's going to include sleep. It's also include things like mindfulness, right? And that would be um, social activity as well, right? We want to be happy, right? Two, that is the training stimulus. We want that to be high and quality because we want the body basically to grow, have strong signals to grow. Priority three, I would call it uh, uh, meal slash nutrient timing, right? And what am I saying? What am I missing? Four, how can I wrap this into four? Uh, oh, that's right, that's right. So four would be uh, addition of low stress uh, activity. Now, you, I don't even know if you can read this, but it's low stress activity. And this is all related to this. So things like walking more, uh, general activities, that could be things like yoga, stretching, dancing, sex, stuff like that. So I haven't even talked about any macros, I haven't talked about any calories, I haven't talked about anything like this. But all I'm going to say, because I've got to finish now, <clears throat> is that before you even look about what you're going to take away from the diet, meaning am I going to take away uh, more fat, am I going to take away my croissant, am I going to take away ice cream, all of this sort of stuff. Before you even look at that, I want you to look at, okay, what can I add? Can I improve my recovery? Can I improve my sleep? If your sleep is bad and your recovery is bad at the moment, you're not going to be able to diet. I promise you that. You're not going to lose any body fat. You're just going to stress yourself out. You're going to burn yourself out. And, and guess what? Your training quality is going to suck and it's just going to dig yourself in a hole. So figure out the best way you can, and it might be changing your bedtime. It might be doing more walking. It might be doing more yoga, more mindfulness, more meditation. It might be trying to have more date nights with your partner. You want to ultimately make yourself as happy as you can. I've worked with 300 people um, and I'm telling you now, every person who tried to diet during winter, it didn't, su they didn't succeed very well. And the reason being is because they weren't very happy. Everybody who has gone on holiday comes back in better body composition, despite them having more alcohol, more food, etc. Why? Because they're happier. So I'm telling you, try and make yourself as happy as possible that's going to feed into recovery and sleep, mindfulness. Do your training, figure out how can I put in the most highest quality of training. Now, you're going to, as you diet, as you create more of a calorie deficit, you're going to have to play with your volume. And so your volume is going to come down a little bit and you're going to work with much more of a sort of intensity stimulus, right? And then, um, uh, what did I put here? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yes. Meal, meal and nutrient timing. So that's basically going to look at when, am, when is my body under the most stress? And that is going to be your training session. So again, as you see with all my posts, it's carbohydrate, protein before. Carbohydrate in the middle of the session. Protein and carbohydrate afterwards. And then again, the end of the meal, end of the day meal is going to be your normal mixed meal. And you might be able to put another protein shake or something at the end of the day. This is what has been crazy. Almost everybody I've ever done calorie restriction with, or dieted, or whatever you want to call it, fat loss, has ended up eating what they feel like is more food, particularly carbohydrates, than they normally eat. Now, from an energy balance point of view, it's probably not the case. Well, it isn't the case if they're losing fat. But there is this margin or this sort of balance where if you get the nutrient timing right, if you pad out the stress you will be happier and everything works and it feels like you're less hungry and all of this sort of stuff um, and then you add in lots of low stress activity now this is where you've got to be careful for some people if for instance you have never run before and you think well to to lose body fat i'm going to create more of an energy deficit by running or starting to run you got to be very careful because if you run that's creating more stress on the body and then you start to create an imbalance, right? 
what you should start with is basically ramping up what you kind of already do. And that might be just, just generally walking more, right? Putting on a podcast and going for a walk. I'm telling you now, I keep repeating, if you can make your body super happy, if you can get your body to be completely under, unaware that you're creating a calorie deficit, I'm telling you your body composition will be better. So that is the rule. And I'm going to end it there because I've got to go. Um, I have no idea if this is helpful for you. Um, but anyway, that was a very impromptu video.